Hey everyone, Adrian here from RME, and today I would like to talk to you about analog summing. For those of you who don't know what analog summing is, it means that instead of bouncing your track straight to hard drive once you're finished, you are taking the individual tracks and send it out to an analog summing mixer or mixing desk. Some of you might ask me now, why would you do that? I mean, DAWs are so powerful nowadays, you can do literally everything in the box. Well, that is true, but some mixing engineers argue that once you go out of the digital realm that consists of zeros and ones, you actually start to gain the benefit of the analog world. And many people describe analog mixed tracks to be way more three-dimensional and with a better separation between the individual signals and also to be more lively. Let's put it this way. But what I find really intriguing about analog mixed tracks is that you actually have another way of working and another effect. Because once you reach a certain clipping point, you actually start to drive the signal and that will create more harmonics and also a little bit of saturation and compression. And that is for me just another effect that I can use for my advantage in the mixing process. So what I'll advise you to do is instead of going out of a mixing desk, uh, once you're finished with your mix, you should use the summing mixer throughout the whole mixing process because then you start to find the sweet spots and intricacies and details of every mix because especially with drums the more I start to hit them harder in an anal into an analog summing mixer I really get a very nice compression and you'll add more liveliness to the, all, uh, to the whole sound. So what I find is sometimes I use less plugins because of that, because I actually can drive my mix very organically. For this demo, we are going to use the SBL Mixstream, which is an amazing summing mixer with a lot of options aside from just summing down your signal. You have 16 channels that are summed down to a two track stereo channel, and you also have inserts for every of those 16 mono channels so you can actually incorporate and lock compressors and EQs and whatever have you. You also have a transformer on the output that you can add and a stereo width control and a limiter. So loads of things that you can actually use for your mixing process. On the converter side, we are going to use the M32 Pro AD and DA converters which are hooked up to my HDSPE MADI FX card via MADI. The signal flow is that we're going to use 16 channels of the M32 Pro DA, go with those channels into the SPL mix stream, and then the stereo mix that is coming out of the SPL mix stream is sent back to the M32 Pro AD. So let's head over to my DAW and Total Mix Effects and I can show you there how I've set up everything and how the routing is done. Here in front of me, I have my Total Mix Effects session and I am running this HDSPE MADI FX card at 44.1 kilohertz. So I have over 300 input channels and output channels and software playback channels. And uh, you can probably tell that this is uh, not a very efficient way to work because I would have to scroll through all those channels every time I want to change something or I want to record something. Hence, we came up with channel layouts. And you find these channel layouts on the right hand side of Total Mix FX. And what these are doing is that you can actually hide channels in Total Mix FX. And these are just hidden. The audio routing remains, the audio plays still in the background. It is just a graphical change that you can apply to your Total Mix Effects session. So if I go over to my channel layout that I've called Mixstream, boom, I just see all the channels that are relevant for my analog summing. So in the middle, I have the software playback channels. These are the channels that are coming from Logic and I've grouped them in Logic into 
different buses and these buses are going to those software playback channels. On the bottom, I have the actual channels that are going into the SPL Mixstream via the M32 Pro DA. So these are the submixes that are actually going to the Mixstream. And this is a clear representation of what is actually going on in the Mixstream. Because my first two channels are mono and these are usually for the kick drum and for the bass. And then I have the rest of the 14 channels grouped into seven stereo channels. And these are usually for main vocals, for background vocals, guitars, auxiliary returns or effect returns, um, etc. So these change from a per project basis. These 16 channels then go into the SBL mix stream and are summed into a stereo channel. So all the channels on the bottom are summed into the SBL mix stream to this stereo channel. And I think this is a quite cool workflow because not only can I change my routing and I can have different settings for all those channels. I could also probably do some EQing or some dynamics if I want to. But also I have a better overview of what is actually going on. Because sometimes in a DAW this becomes very cluttered. Uh, I show you that later in the logic session. Um, you have a lot of channels uh, that are opening up and it's just sometimes way too much to have a good overview of what the actual levels are. So I really like this overview and I can put this on a secondary monitor or on my iPad and I'm good to go. You know, this is, this is a very flexible setup and I really enjoy that. What makes the M32 Pro so great, apart from the sound quality, is the fact that we can set the reference level for every input and output channel individually. So we have the option to set the reference level either to plus 13, plus 19 or plus 24 dBU individually. In this case, the SPL Mixstream has a maximum input level of plus 28 dBU. So we have a lot of headroom and I can say we are quite safe not to overdrive one of those channels. In Logic, the setup is not as complicated as one might think. What I did here is, as you can see, I have all my tracks edited here and down below here in the mixing window, I've routed every track to a particular bus. So if I go here to my bus for the kick drum, you can see that I've created a bus system where one bus is going to one of the inputs of the SBL mix stream. So SBL Mixstream 1, like I said, that is a mono channel, is a mono bus in Logic and here I set my kick drum. So if I go over to that particular bus in Logic, you can see that here is my bus for the Mixstream input 1 and then I have down below selected the output. And this is a mono output. So the only thing you need to understand is that when I select one of those channels here, these are actually not the direct output channels that going out of the M32 Pro DA, but these are the software playback channels that I select. And the software playback channel then is routed to one of my submixes. Big important difference. This might be counterintuitive in the beginning, but once you understand the principle of total mix effects, you will actually love it because it gives you much more freedom. So like I said, in this case, input one and two are mono channels on the SBL mix stream. And this is actually represented here. Output 17 is my mono channel that is going out of the software playback channel into submix for the SBL Mixroom input 1. I've saved this as a logic template and whenever I start a mixing session I already have everything pre-planned and pre-routed and I can just start to mix. So like in this case if I have my kick drum and I want to have it more compressed or more saturated all I have to do is turn the kick drum up in this case and then I get 
more out of the SPL Mixstream because I actually drive the channel a little bit more. The last thing I want to show you is my AB comparison setup. I've created two snapshots. One is called DAW and the other is called Mixstream. For those who don't know what a snapshot is, it is actually a saved routing. So in this case, DAW is just all the software playback channels routed straight to my monitors, to my phones and my main monitors. And what I get is the straight playback from Logic. If I go over to Mixstream, what you can see is that I've routed the signal that is coming out of the Mixstream to my headphones and to my main monitors. So why would I do that? Well, because actually I want to know where I am in the mixing process, because sometimes you actually make the signal worse by adding too much sauce, you know? It's like cooking, sometimes it gets too salty and it would be lovely to know where you started to actually know, okay, all right, this is way too much. I've actually made the sound too muddy or too vintagey or whatever. I can just flick through those different snapshots and can actually reference what I did. And the best thing is I have an ARC USB next to me and it is just snapshot number seven and eight on my ARC USB and I can just switch over in real time. If you would do something similar in another DAW, you would have to record the analog sound signal or you would have to make an active input and do some solo and unmute and yada yada yada. Here it is just snapshot number eight, snapshot number seven, done. On top of that, I also have the option to use DigiCheck. This is even better because now I have a totalizer and a peak and an RMS meter and a face correlation meter. So I'm in control at every stage of the mixing process. All right, so what I want you to understand is that you can replicate this workflow with every RME interface out there because Total Mix FX is the same for every RME interface. The only thing that will change is the amount of channels that you can utilize and probably the reference levels that you have available. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about the M32 Pro, AD or DA, hit me up in the comment section below. See you in the next video.